Hey students, uh, today we're going to discuss the difference between dry air and humid air. Uh, and the purpose of this is to help us understand a little bit more about um, the different types of pressure systems like high pressure and low pressure. And we want to look at what influences um, you know, air that's high or low pressure and how do different molecules that make up the air influence those different pressures. So <clears throat> Um, first of all, what is dry air versus humid air? Um, dry air is air that lacks water vapor. And so water vapor is down here, H2O. And uh, you'll notice in my dry air, what I've done is I've taken a, a box here and I've placed um, both nitrogen and oxygen molecules in there. And those are the primary molecules that make up our atmosphere. Um, we have you know, roughly 78, 79% nitrogen gas and about 20-ish uh, percent oxygen gas roughly in a normal um, chunk of air. And then there's some other trace gases in there. Water vapor can be one of those. So if we have dry air, it's going to be mostly composed of those green nitrogen molecules, which are N2, and uh, some oxygen molecules, which is O2. And of course, I've greatly expanded, like zoomed way in on this section of air, because in a, a, any kind of chunk of air, volume of air that you could actually see, there would be many, many more molecules in this. Um, so if you notice the dry air mainly just contains nitrogen gas and oxygen gas in it. But what is humid air over here? Humid air is where we actually have water vapor that has uh, been introduced into the air. So we don't just have nitrogen and oxygen, we also have molecules of water vapor which is H2O. So where would that humidity come from? Um, well, we live in, in here in Colorado, and so we don't have a whole lot of uh, different bodies of water to introduce water into the air. So we typically experience more dry air, but areas that are near bodies of water are going to experience more humid air where there's going to be more water that's evaporating and then what's going to happen is that water that's evaporating is going to displace or kind of push out some of the nitrogen and oxygen in that area so it'll be a mixture of all three gases now i want you to answer this question and, and come up with a hypothesis do you think dry air or humid air is more dense which one do you think is more dense and to help you with that, remember that density, which is denoted with the letter rho, or it looks like a lowercase p, um, what is density? It's mass divided by volume. Um, notice that I kept both of these boxes the same volume, and so that's not a factor here. What we really want to do is say which one has more mass. So just based on your experience, which one do you think is more dense, dry air or humid air? Uh, most people answer this question and they say humid air is more dense. And I think that's just because our experience is uh, that whenever we've gone somewhere that's very humid, maybe you've visited an area near the ocean, uh, perhaps Florida, uh, and, and you've noticed uh, when you step off that plane, it just feels dense. The air feels thick and it's like sticking to you. And that humid air, um, just you can feel how heavy it is. And so our, our life experience or how we interpret things, often people think that humid air is more dense. But let's see if we can prove or disprove that hypothesis. In order to do that, we're going to look primarily at mass. And we want to compare the mass of these two volumes of container. Because like I said, the volume is the same. Okay, we have the same amount of air particles. If you count these up, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve uh, molecules in there. And I also have twelve over here in the humid air. Um, so what we want to do is compare the mass of each of these sections of air and see which one is more massive. How can we know the mass of an air molecule? Well, we can actually uh, come down here and look at the periodic table and uh, we can use the mass of individual atoms from the periodic table to compare the masses. 
So let's figure out for a nitrogen molecule into what is the mass. Now remember that's two nitrogens that are bonded together and you might remember from Lewis structures it's a triple bond. Um, it looks kind of like this. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, the nitrogen molecule has a mass of 14.007 AMU, which is atomic mass units. And the units aren't critical here. Um, we're really just comparing amounts. So if I have two, and let's round this to whole numbers. So if I have two times 14, um, each nitrogen is going to have a mass of 28. Okay. What about oxygen? Oxygen molecules are O2, two oxygens bound together with a covalent bond. And if we round that mass of one oxygen to about 16, 16 times 2 is 32. And let's go ahead and get our mass of water vapor. So water vapor is made up of one oxygen and two hydrogens. So oxygen is 16 and each hydrogen is about one and we have two of those. So that would make the mass of water vapor about 18 AMUs. Okay, now we can see even here that the mass of water, a water molecule, is actually quite a bit smaller than either nitrogen or oxygen. So this is already helping us get a better understanding of uh, our answer here. All right, now let's count these up. <clears throat> for nitrogens in my first box, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 nitrogens. So for each one, I'm going to multiply 10 nitrogens times the mass of each nitrogen, which is 28. That's going to give me 280 total for that little cross section. Uh, and then I have two oxygens in here. So one, two, two times 32, which is 64. And when I add those up, four, four, I get about 344. So let me write that here, 344 AMU. That's the mass of that sample of air, that volume of air right there. Now let's do the same thing for the humid air and see what we come up with. So let's count up our nitrogens. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nitrogens, okay, times 28. So we multiply that out, 7 times 28 gives me a mass of 196 AMU. Now let's count up our oxygens. I have two oxygens in this one as well. So 2 times 32 gives me 64. I'm running out of space here. And then I have water vapor in here. And notice that the water vapor has, of course, like I said, pushed out some of the nitrogen and um, potentially some of the oxygen as well and, and sort of displaced those or pushed them out of the way. And in this case, I have three times 18, which gives me a mass of 54 AMU. And now when I add all of these up, I get a mass of 314 AMUs. So let me write that up here, 314. So which one of these boxes is heavier, has more mass? We Over here in our dry air, we have a mass of 344. Over here in our humid air, we have a mass of 314. So which one is more dense, dry or humid air? And the answer is our dry air. Okay, dry air is more dense. And can you explain why that is? That's because dry air is composed more of nitrogen and oxygen and less water. And nitrogen and oxygen both have a higher mass than water vapor does. Whereas humid air has displaced some of the oxygen and nitrogen with water. And water has a lower mass compared to the oxygen and the nitrogen. So what does this mean in terms of high and low pressure? What this means, if we think about it, if dry air is more dense, that means we have more air particles packed together in a tighter space. And that's usually uh, gonna result in a higher pressure because um, of the more dense air. 
Um, and if uh, you've learned that, that higher pressure um, typically leads to falling air. Um, high pressure system leads to falling air. For humid air over here, um, humid air is less dense. And so if we have an area like over the ocean where we're getting a lot of evaporation, that's going to be very humid air. And because it's less dense, um, it's going to have less pressure and you're going to have a lower pressure system. And lower pressure systems typically result in rising air because if it's less dense air than the air than other air around it, it's typically going to rise up. So we've answered our question. Uh, dry air is actually more dense than humid air, despite what sometimes we might feel. And that has a great influence on weather systems and air masses all around the world. Thanks for watching.